Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to an introduction to morphology. Morphology in Arabic is known as ilm al-sarf or a tasrif. Now morphology is a fundamental aspect of the Arabic language that deals with the study of base letters or patterns of words. Now in these introductory lessons we will explore the basics of Arabic morphology. It's actually a very necessary science. Now what is morphology exactly? It's related to how words are formed from base letters and they're usually three base letters. These three base letters are then put on certain patterns to give similar meanings. Let's get an example. I have the past tense verb, fataha. Fataha means he opened. We can also add letters to the three base letters. And then I can get the present tense verb, yeftahu, which is he is opening. And this ya here, we'll later understand, is a sign that this is a mudara or a present tense verb. And notice the haraka change from the past tense to the present tense. There's a change. So the science of morphology deals with that as well, these changes in the vowels. We have, for example, the word maftuh. Maftuh. Here we've added a meme and a wow. And these types of words are known as, in Arabic we call them ism maf'ul, in English the passive participle. And this means opened. So if I said, for example, al-babu maftuhun, the door is open. We have, for example, suratul fatiha. Literally it means the opener, that which opens the Quran. Fatiha. And the tamar bota here, the sign of femininity. So that's one aspect of morphology. Now, when we talk about changes of the last letter or inflection, that's actually related to grammar. That last letter that changes determines the grammatical state of the word. That change actually is not part of morphology. This is part of grammar. And it's to do with declension of words. When we're speaking of vowels, we're speaking of the vowels on the other letters, not, not the last letter, which changes in the same word. Now we have a root system. These three base letters, they're called the jether, the roots of a word. Now let's take, for example, a word, the word al-maghdub. Now that's similar, notice, maftuh, maghdub. So what do we know? This is a passive participle. It's the one where anger is directed to. What is the jether? What's the jether of this word? It's gha da ba. The rain, the dad, and the ba. That's the three base letters. Most words will be three base letters. And some a small percentage will be four base letters. Like, for example, the word zalzala. That's in the Quran, zalzala, which means it shook violently. Now, with morphology, also we have al awzan, which are patterns of words, and as we spoke about it. As an example, if we take this pattern, maf'al, where the fa is the first radical, ayn is the second radical, and nam is the third radical. Words on these patterns denote the place where an action takes place. لعب, to play. And so the malab is the place of playing or amusement. So it's the playground or amusement park. We'll take another jether. شريبة, it means to drink. And if we put these three base letters in this pattern of maf'al, we get mashrab the place of drinking. So you can see that we have a pattern that denotes the place where an action is being carried out. So knowing these patterns actually greatly enhances our vocabulary. And just by knowing the three base letters, one can get a very good idea of what a word means. Just by the pattern that it's on. Another point with base letters is if we take words that share the same three base letters. 
there will be a relationship between those words. There'll be some connected meaning based on those three base letters. With most, you'll see the similarity. It's very easy to. Some of them actually require a bit more tadabbur, reflection. Morphology also relates to things like dual and plural forms, the muthanna and the jama, and how they're formed as well. And there's different types of jama, we'll also discover, different types of plurals. Something else that's found in sarf, which some of you may enjoy, and others not so much, are the conjugations. And they occur with, mostly with, verbs. We also have different types of derived nouns, different forms of the verbal noun, different forms of the adjective, the noun of place, the noun of time, and so many others. So there's a very strong connection with morphology and grammar. And in fact, you need to know both. Which one should you know first? I'm of the opinion is to learn some sarf, just basic sarf, and then start grammar. Learn sarf and grammar as you go along. However, with grammar, you, maybe you can, you can actually advance further on um, until you require the knowledge in the sarf, which, you know, most of the times you'll need, you'll need a good level of Arabic grammar to be able to apply what you learn in sarf. Because so sometimes when you learn the rules in sarf, you have no way of seeing it being used in a sentence, for example, how it's used, the different variations of what you learn in sarf. So it depends on the person and how he's being taught. But that's the way that I generally like to do it. Now, as I said, in, in conclusion, morphology is an essential aspect of Arabic ling linguistics. And this is just the introduction. And inshallah, we'll be starting animal sarf in the next lesson. I am so happy to meet some of my students, brother. When we sit down and do analysis of the Quran, we pick up a sentence in the Quran and we try to analyze it and understand how the sentence was constructed. And you come across verb and these students are able to trace it back to the root. It's so beautiful, brother. Inshallah, you will do it. You will all become expert. You and I, we may not speak Arabic fluently. But we will become master of Arabic verbs, inshallah. We will know Arabic verbs left and right. And brother, people run away from Arabic verbs. Huh? They say Arabic verbs, oh, it's, it's difficult. No, brothers and sisters, Arabic words are beautiful. They are fascinating. They are enjoyable. So brother, kha raja. What is kha? Fa kalima. First radical. What is Ra? Ain Kalima. Second radical. What is Jean? Lam Kalima. Third radical. Huh? Okay. And if I tell you any other word, you will also do the same way. Now I want you to look at the difference. Huh, brother? Kharaja. Now I am writing. Zahaba. Then I am writing. Jalasa. And then I am writing. Uh, Raja. Do you see here, brother? What do you see? Fa kalima? Ain kalima? Lam kalima. Now I write down something else. I write down here two very popular verbs. Samia. And then I'm writing Shariba. Okay, brothers and sisters? Samia. What is the meaning of Samia? He heard. Huh? Or he listened. Shariba, he drank. Okay, fine. What do you see here? Fa kalima, ain kalima, lam kalima. First radical, second radical, third radical. Okay, are you with me? Now I write down two more verbs, brother. Karuma, and I'm writing another word here. Bauda. Okay, fa kalima. Ain kalima, lam kalima. First radical, second radical, third radical. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, if you were to observe this, you will find something. And I told you last time. 
that far kalima in all of them has a fata. And the lam kalima, all of them has a fata. So that is the rule. All the verbs, the root, in the root form, fa kalima will always, always have a fata. And lam kalima will always, always have a fata. And what about ain kalima? Ain kalima can have these three vowel signs. It can have a fata. It can have a kasara. And it can have a tamma. Huh? So this we have to be very observant. You know, for example, samia. See, the ain kalima has a kasra. Shariba, ain kalima has a kasra. Karuma, ain kalima has a dhamma. Huh? Bauda, ain kalima has a dhamma. So be, watch for it. Okay. Now, these verbs are called healthy verbs. What are they called? Healthy verbs. Al fialo sahi. Healthy verbs. But if something is healthy, then it has to be somebody who is very weak or sick. Huh? Because for a healthy person, there is also after someone who is not healthy, which means he is sick. So there are some verbs which are called weak verbs. I won't call them sick verbs. They are all weak verbs. Now this is just a general information. Any verb, huh? any verb, brother and sister, whether it has fa kalima or ain kalima or lam kalima. If it has vow and ya. Are you with me? Huh? If it has vow and ya, then it is a weak verb. What is it? It's called weak verb. Huh? In the meantime, we'll become stronger in our sahi verbs. In which verb? There will be no vow, there will be no ya. Huh? There will be no vow. As you can see, I didn't put any with vow and ya. Okay? So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm.